Good day, Inspector J. Morning, Dawning. Any news of the Gerda murder? <laughs> yes, sir. He was shot in ock shot by bag shot with a slingshot full of bookshot. <laughs> He's a good shot, his bag shot. Well, you must be pleased that situation's eased. The relief is beyond belief, Chief. <laughs> My mind is once more a blank and I've only got you to thank. All right, all right. This is the fawning dawning. I'm glad to hear your head is clear. It leaves more space for the Mrs May's case to take its place. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. May's case, have they traced the face? No, and what's more, the nightdress is still missing too. Ah, is she sure which nightdress she was wearing? She's not mistaken which was taken. How come, little chum? Well, <laughs> due to the voluptuous Mrs. Mays, each of her nightdresses are equally attractively seductive or seductively attractive. Whatever she wore, she would always be a bountiful, beautiful nighty for. <laughs> I've heard she's a grand lady to have as a landlady. I've been told her teapot's never cold. <laughs> I would be delighted to be selected to inspect her, Inspector. Any prospects of any suspect? Yes, three. Two of them are actors who lodge with Grace, Mrs. Mays, at her place in the chase. One, <laughs> one is Leo Mighty, a leading man, well known for his portrayal of farmers, charmers, and men in pyjamas. <laughs> and the other one is Roger Manger, the stage manager, who once played a mad stranger in a film with Stuart Granger called Deadly Danger. <laughs> May I add another to the list? of I am not being bumptious or presumptuous. Who? Sergeant Bodger. Bodger? The replacement constable from Dunstable. You must be mad, lad. Just a theory, dearie. <laughs> May I sit down? Please make yourself comfy, Humphrey. <laughs> it's just that Sergeant Bodger has a face like a fit, which happens to fit the face on the photo fit in the first place, and is often to be found round at her place in the chase, filling his face with fried fish. Fried fish? <laughs> Fried by Grace, Mrs. Mace, mostly place all days. But surely, Leo Mighty is much more likely. I mean, he's there nightly. She's looked very flighty in her nightie. He'd be the sort of toffee try to pull it off. <laughs> Possibly, but here is something you don't know. I don't know. I have had words with a uh, Roger. A uh, Roger? The lodger. Oh, Roger Manger, who played the stranger with Granger. He says he saw Leo taking the nightdress. He was staring through the keyhole in Mrs. Mace's door. What? He dared to stare through there. Would he swear he saw Leo Mighty take the nightie? He'll do plenty of swearing. No wonder he was staring. It was the nightdress she was wearing. What? Surely not. He jumped on the bed and pulled it over her head. She went red, so he fled, and he hid himself in the shed and wished he was dead. She was going to call her cousin Tim, but she went dizzy in the head, so she lay on the bed instead and went red. So you said. <laughs> Roger is a liar. Have you any proof, you silly old poof? <laughs> seen the bedroom where Mrs. May sleeps. It's an attic, therefore this story about pulling the nightdress over her head must be false. He must have pulled the nightgown right down. There's no headroom in her bedroom. <laughs> so Roger is lying. Roger's the culprit. Game set and match. So ends the disgraceful Grace May's case. I'll just inform the inspector. Oh, the chief inspector. What a relief, inspector. Hello, inspector. Yes, we've solved the Mrs. May's case. You will be glad to hear that Leo is innocent and so is Sergeant Bodger. Yes. In other words, it was not Leo Mighty who lifted the night, it was Roger the Lodger, the soft-footed dodger, and not Sergeant Bodger, thank God. <laughs>